So welcome back to the channel, everyone. Welcome back to my echoey, weirdly lit sunroom that I continue to film in for some reason. Um, a few days ago, I posted an Instagram story uh, of this picture uh, of a different looking camera rig, and I got a lot of questions about it in my inbox. And so I'm making a video today to sort of break that rig down and to talk about this new format of video. Let's get into that. All right, so if you're a new viewer here, um, I usually talk about gear or different ideas in relation to my work as a freelancer. I'm a corporate uh, commercial videographer. I take on different clients across Canada in all kinds of different sectors and industry. Um, and there's this common thread across all of them right now, which is how do we address vertical content? I think something like 80% of the video that we are currently consuming right now is vertical and that's because our phones are shaped like this and for some reason we've gotten too lazy to flip them like that. Apps like TikTok, Reels, YouTube Shorts, they're all capitalizing on vertical content. And I'll be honest, it's a bit of the wild, wild west right now. Some projects we shoot them horizontally, landscape like this video right here, and then we cut a like vertical slice out and we deliver both separately and clients are cool with that. But more and more commonly, I'm getting clients in the inquiry stage wanting to begin storyboarding and thinking about an entire video, start to finish, in vertical format. And this poses a unique challenge because our cameras are not meant to be held that way. You can see this thing was very clearly designed to be held like this. All of the ergonomics that we currently think about, it's all set up to be horizontal. Now, with that said, with just a few um, relatively inexpensive pieces of cage and gear, we can actually make a fairly ergonomic vertical setup and one that looks professional to your clients, that shows, hey, I showed up ready to shoot this, and more importantly, helps you get a steady quality image and doesn't like hurt your hands and wrists after a day of shooting. And so I have the gear in front of me. I'm gonna kind of build that rig. We're gonna fast forward and slow down and talk about it at different points. I'm gonna show you just sort of the basics of a good vertical rig. And now importantly, this is a Sony camera. These are Sony pieces, but this would work for you Canon shooters, for you Nikon shooters that are out there. Um, you can find equivalent parts on Amazon or Small Rig or wherever uh, that can help you get this format for whatever camera you shoot. Secondly, this video is gonna look like it's sponsored by Small Rig because it's pretty much all Small Rig pieces. Uh, it's not, maybe one day they will, but yeah, they just make some of the best gear. So that's what we're gonna be primarily using today. So uh, first piece that you need is your camera, obviously, and a cage. I'm gonna assume if you're watching this, you probably know what a cage is. Uh, you probably own one, but for those of you that don't, this is a cage. It just has a bunch of different mounting holes and ports for uh, different camera gear, and it slaps right onto your camera, just like that. Uh, we just gotta twist it in. So the thing I actually love about Small Rig, again, not sponsored, is that a lot of them have like the pieces you need to screw them in inside uh, the, the actual piece itself, so, oops. So yeah, that actually is just in there. We screw that right in the tripod hole in the bottom. Next piece of this gear is, again, no surprise, it's a lens, we need a lens to shoot. I shoot a lot of my vertical content pretty wide, usually at like 20 to 24 millimeters, um, but I'm gonna put the Tamron 28 to 75 2.8 on here. Um, just to show you guys that you can film with a bigger rig if you need, there's there's no reason you can't put a 70 to 200 or anything huge on this. Um, but yeah, I usually shoot these pretty wide. Okay, so now we've got, again, the classic setup. This is just a camera with a cage on it. Normally we would start to rig it out sideways, so we'd start to put some handles here, we'd have some mounts up here. Um, but what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna rotate it like this. And we're gonna start putting our attachments on the underside and top side of the camera. Uh, and I'll show you guys what that looks like. So our first handle that we have is the small rig with record button. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, it can be a real pain in the butt to try to like hit the record button if you didn't have a record button handle. It's not mandatory. You can definitely use a non-record button handle. For me though, ergonomics are important. The ability to just kind of start and go. So I do recommend the small rig with record. On the top side here, we actually do have the two holes for it. So these two screw threads right there, they screw into those holes there. So let's get that in there. The nice thing about this small rig with record handle is that it comes with a bunch of different cords. So um, no matter what kind of camera you have, it has ones that plug into a bunch of different ports. 
This one just plugs into the micro USB port at the bottom of the A7S III, uh, but it comes with one that plugs into the headphone jack. There's a whole bunch of different ways you can do this. All right, so boom, we kind of already have something that's feeling a lot more ergonomic than that weird sort of like holding it claw grip overhand like this. Um, this is passable, you know, like if you actually just needed to have something on, on the quick that works, this is great. But we're gonna add a few more things that really make this uh, both professional looking and, and more ergonomic. Next up, um, you'll notice there's some mounting points on the bottom here and Again, it's the exact same threading on these. This is not a small rig. This is like a cheap Amazon camvate side rig or um, side handle. I got this like three years ago. I still use it on almost every rig I build. It's great. It works well. And similarly to that other one, we're just screwing this right into those threads just like this. Okay, so boom. Now we actually have what feels like a fairly ergonomic grip. This, uh, if you showed up to a client project like this, you look prepared, you look professional. Again, you're not just trying to like do this and make it work. This looks intentional and again, more than anything, it feels ergonomic. You're not like shaking, you're not trying to like hold it like this. You can angle and move this thing just like a normal camera. And I, again, I'll put the, the links to the Amazon below or to the, the side handles below. Um, this is like a pretty inexpensive fix and we're like 90% of the way there. So next up, we need to have a microphone on here. Um, again, if you're watching this, you know that the in-camera audio from the Sony's not so good. So I have just a Rode VideoMic Pro. This is one of the older ones. It's pretty long and egregious, but it works just fine. Um, the thing I like about the smaller handle is it has that cold shoe on the top. So nothing crazy here. That just slides in like that, screw it down. Plug this guy down to the bottom. And, and the really nice thing about the Sony is, I'm gonna get in close so you guys can see this, is because it has that flip LCD monitor, this actually flips it down and that gives you a monitor to mount while you're shooting. You can invert this whole thing and actually have it flip up. I like to be able to look over my camera. I try not to build too much out in this upper area. So this actually works really well for me. Um, but yeah, with the Sony um, flipping LCD, I'll show you guys that. Um, that gives you a great monitoring uh, display on this rig. Like that works totally fine. And so yeah, that's that's it guys. This is the vertical uh, mirrorless A7S III um, grip that I recommend. You show up to a client shoot with this thing, it looks professional, you got your good ergonomics, you're gonna get steady shots. Um, and like I said, this is not an overly complex rig. If you are already shooting landscape, there's a good chance you have most of these parts or maybe you need to grab an extra handle um, to get this going, but that's it. If you have any questions about this thing, um, feel free to, to leave a comment below. I, I check those comments all the time. I'm a YouTube partner now, so I can make tens of dollars a year on this channel, can't wait for that. Uh, if you made it this far, subscribe if, you, if you'd like, I would like that. Uh, and yeah, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.